Hi, this is Anil Bhartia, and today we have with us Stephen Tan, Chair of the Soda Foundation. Steve, uh, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, tell us a bit about what is Soda Foundation and what is in the name? What does Soda stand for? So let me explain what, what Soda stands for. Okay, Soda stands for something about open data autonomy. <laughs> you get it? Open data autonomy, ODA. Actually, we couldn't quite decide on what S stands for. So we call it Soda, actually. So it's Soda Open Data Autonomy. It's just like GNU, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. GNU is not Unix. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, Perfect. so this is what it stands for. Right. Tell us about the foundation itself. Okay. The, yeah, this is the more, more important thing. The foundation is actually a, a collaboration among vendors and users to focus on data management for, for uh, what you call autonomous data man management. And the point of this whole thing is that how do we serve the users, you know, on, cause uh, a lot of our users actually have a lot of uh, data challenges and that's what this foundation is for, to get users and vendors together to help to address these uh, data challenges. What kind of data are we talking about? The data that we're talking about is referring to anything like um, data protection, data governance, um, data replication, data copy management and stuff like that. And also data integration, you know, how to bring, how to connect to the different data silos and stuff. Right. But are we talking about enterprise data or are we talking consumer data? Like there is a lot of data which Facebook, Google and Gmail, and then there's a lot of enterprise data, which companies, you know, sorry, as an enterprise, I may put something on this cloud. I can put on this cloud. So can you please clarify what data are we talking about? Actually, the data that we're talking about is, um, it depends on the users. There's all kinds of data. Um, like, for example, I mean, in the keynote that I gave um, two days ago, um, the data, the example I gave was about from Toyota. So Toyota, Toyota um, use case is actually car data. So car data refers to things like the car sensor data, videos, you know, map data and stuff. And then we have like users like China Unicom. I mean, they have like enterprise companies, you know, going to the cloud and so on. So they have all kinds of like enterprise data, right, over there. And then we also have like other users like, um, like Yahoo Japan, you know, they, they have like a website. So the data that they're talking about is web data, you know, consumer data and stuff like that. You know. So it's across the board. Oh, so not it's not specific to an industry or any space sector. Okay. Uh, but why do you need it? What is, what is the problem that you see in the market and in, in the current sphere that you're like, hey, we should create something like that? So the, the problem that, um, actually the problem that came, I mean, the, the reason why why all these companies came together is because um, they are they are building um, data centers, you know, like that are, I mean, from small to big. But the a lot of the challenges that they have is like it's hard for it's like a single project to to address. You know, it's not like this is we have a specific problem and then we need this to be solved and so on. It's, it's not like that. A lot of it is like how do you connect the different pieces together in the data center together. So there, there, there's nothing like, or no organization like that that can help them solve this kind of problem. Like, how do you, how do you have, um, in order to, you know, address the data of like, how, or how do you address things like taking care of like data protection and, you know, data privacy at the same time. And at the same time, you want to make sure that this data can be uh, governed properly, you know? So, so there isn't any single organization that can, can help to take care of this kind of stuff. So, so we're helping these users, you know, understand their problems and then come together and then we plan projects and roadmaps based on this, based on their problems and try to address them to these projects in Soda Foundation. And you gave example of, you know, data from the cars and all those things. Does that also mean that uh, open source has helped solving a lot of problems by breaking down a lot of silos so that there's a lot of, you know, uh, interaction between different silos, which were like earlier separated and isolated. It, it, today, as you mentioned, you know, uh, we are living in a data-driven world. No matter what we do, all the way from the ring to what we are doing right now, talking to each other, to the product that we'll create in the end. But most of this data is living in their own silos. There may be a lot, lot, of, lot of value in the data, which cannot be extracted 
because when it is locked into the silos, there's a second problem that these days, since data is kind of becoming the next oil, companies are trying to, to capture all the data irrespective of the fact of what value do they see in that data today. And by leveraging machine learning and deep learning, they can in future. So, so, so how do you look at that? And, and how is Soda Foundation going to break those silos and without compromising on our privacy, yet allow companies? Because the fact is, as much as I prefer my privacy, I also want Google Maps to tell me the fastest route where I want to go. Right. So I, I think there, there are certain, I mean, there are different levels of privacy that we gotta take care of, okay? Like, and in terms of like, first of all, there are all kinds of, um, I mean, in terms of like different different cu countries or different states, you know, or different province, you know, like in different countries, they have different kind of uh, regulations and so on. So first of all, like the data silos you talk about, yes, that's one of the key problems that we're trying to solve. How to connect all the different data silos so as to reduce fragmentation, you know, and then try to minimize the so-called dark data that you talk about, right? To and then extract all the values over there. So that's, that's one of the things that we try to get here. How do you, I mean, we try to connect all the different pieces like in the different, the data may be sitting in the edge in the data center or different data centers and in the cloud. We try to connect all these pieces together. I mean, that's one of the first things that we try to do. And then we try to have data policies. I think this is a critical piece of thing that a lot of the um, solutions out there are not trying, don't address, you know, you have data policies, but it may be the data policy is just for a single vendor solution, you know. But once that data gets out of that, you know, that that solution, then it's out of control. So what we're trying to do here is that how do you have like data policies across different solutions, or you know, no matter where. So no matter where the data is, it's governed the same way consistently. That's the key, you know. So then then you can talk about like how do you really? I mean, how can you really prove? Um, protect the data like in terms of like the privacy or govern the data or control the data. And in terms of like the, um, I mentioned about the regions, right? Because so you know where the data is, you know, and you know what are the kind of regulations that needs to be taken care of. So, and you apply it right there. That's how, how it should work. When we look at, you know, the, the kind of, you know, scenario you talked about, I see it is two twofold. Like one is there is a technology problem that, that should be platform or you know technical solutions. And then second is also I don't think it's the cultural, but it's more or less like people, you know, policy and all those things are more government driven. You know, these are so there are two aspects of data. So uh, is Soda Foundation going to uh, deal with both or are you going to just deal with the technology uh, aspect of it? The technology part that we talk about, we try to define like um, in terms of like the APIs and so on, right? To, you know, all the data policies and so on and try to, try to you know, get as many, as many companies to support this as possible. And then the next thing that we try to do is actually try to work with, um, to try to work with standards organizations to make, try to make this into a standard. I mean, that's, that's what we're trying to do here. Yeah. And then government experts, there are certain, certain um, organizations they are talking to, like um, there's the CESI, you know, it's China Electronic Standards Organizations they were talking to, they try to, you know, work things into their, um, I, actually, I, I'm not sure about China because it's, it's I mean, mm -hmm. it's, we don't know about their, their sphere of influence, I mean, within this uh, CESI and so on. And then like for the industry standards, like there's a SNEER, you know, IEEE and so on, we'll try to work with them and see, see, I mean, try to get it work, you know. Can you talk about, you know, the ecosystem that you're trying to build around uh, Soda Foundation? Uh, one would be the participants who are actually contributing either the code or the vision, and then the users community who would actually be benefiting from it. So the ecosystem that we are trying to build, um, that's the core part, which is actually the framework so the framework, I mean, this part will be more of the uh, data vendors or the storage vendors that will be involved in building, trying to build this ecosystem. And then the, the, the outer part of the, what they call the outer part of the ecosystem will be things like the, the platforms, you know, like things like Kubernetes, you know, VMware and all these different vendors. And then, you know, like networking kind of stuff that you need to take care of, like the big data analytics and stuff. Um, and then, for the users, actually, 
if you can see like from what uh, soda and user advisory committee i mean that's where this where most of our users are, are participate in the um, communication so the most of these users i mean they are from different regions and different countries and different industries so is we we try to serve i mean whoever whichever participant is uh, interested in they can participate in this thing but the main thing is that um because they may be from different industries but most actually most of the issues that they have is still the same thing you know so yeah so there are some commonalities between, among all these users uh we are in the middle of 2020 uh because of covid 19 everything has slowed down things have changed uh, what does your roadmap, what does your plan look like, you know, that um, the the structure, the governance and the plan for uh, 21 or end of the year? We are very, what do you call it, a, com a very community driven or focused kind of a, um, organization. We, we hold a lot of actually meetups and, you know, events and so on, and where we get together with the users and the vendors and so on and the community in general. Um, so with this COVID nineteen thing, a lot of a lot of the plans has been you know upset. I mean it's in chaos right now. So most of the things are like what everybody is doing, moving online. So we 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 are having some webinars and so on. Like even as of right now, that like when we are talking, we are having a mini summit going on with the uh, the the open source summit of North America right now. So um, so for the rest of this year. Um, most of our events will be online. We're going to have some webinars and some meetups. Um, you can find it out from our website. And um, the other plans that we have is that we are going to have, um, we just released um, it, the Soda Ferro release, which is the 1.0 release. And at, through the end of this year, we're going to have two more releases, um, the G release and the H release at the um, end of this year. G release is going to be in September and H is in end of the year, right? And we're trying to, I mean, try to engage our users with uh, things like the POC, you know, testing for the Faro. Because each release that we have, we try to get them to do to testing. And then, so they that's the way of them trying to provide feedback to us, whether that works for them or how can we improve, you know, to, to make make them uh, make the code work for, work for what they need. Yeah. Uh, awesome, Stu. Thank you so much for, for taking your time out and explaining uh, more about uh, Soda Foundation. And I look forward to talk to you again because I can see that you have a very exciting pipeline uh, ahead. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry.